Chris M.C. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. anyhow. That's your problem. You wouldn't understand atmosphere if you fell over. A candle sticking out of a beer bottle isn't what I call atmosphere. It was a wine bottle. I don't care what it was. Why can't we ever go out dancing? Dancing? Yeah, dancing. Look, I get all the exercise I need out at the base. In the evening, I like to relax. I like to sit around in and... In those little dark places, I know. Well, why can't we ever go out with some other people? I work all day with a platoon. I don't have to travel with one at night, too. Just take me dancing. Is that so much to ask? Just one night, take me dancing. You want to dance? Go out with Fred Astaire. Maybe I will. Then do it. As soon as you leave, I just march. I'm leaving. Good. And I'm not coming back. That just suits me fine. Take her dancing, take her dancing. Well, you women are all like you never. You don't know how to treat a girl. Frankie, there's just one thing about that movie that I didn't understand. What? Well, you remember when the good guy went to jail posing as the bad guy so he could get information from the real bad guy as to where he hid the money? Yeah, so? Well... How did the bad guy, the real bad guy, know that the good guy wasn't really a bad guy, but was only acting like he was a bad guy when he was really a good guy? Don't you remember the guy who was in the cell with the bad guy? Do you mean the real bad guy or the bad guy that was really a good guy? No, no, in the cell with the real bad guy, that guy was a bad guy too. And he knew the good guy because the good guy was the one who sent him up. So he told the other bad guy about it. Oh. So if the bad guy hadn't known the good guy, then the other bad guy wouldn't have known that the good guy wasn't really the bad guy, right? Look, Homer, why don't you wait till next year? By that time, it'll be on television. You can watch it again. No, I think I understand. If the bad guy... Hey, look over there. Let me have a beer. Don't, Gomer. It sure doesn't look like the Sarge wants any company. Well, he hadn't seen us yet, Frankie. <laughs> he just seen us, Frankie. He waved back. <laughs> hey, Sergeant. We seen you when you come in. Oh, hi, fellas. Sit down, sit down. Oh, well, boys, where you been? Nowhere much. We just been to the movies. Good. It's good for you to get away from the daily routine and relax. You deserve it. You work hard. Uh, oh, wh where you been, Sergeant? Uh, Any place special? You know, I've never been one to look back to see where I've been. I'd rather look forward to see where I'm going. My past lies behind me. There's nothing I can do about that. But my future lies ahead. Dark, mysterious. Life is strange. Here today, gone tomorrow. Why? Wow, where are you going tomorrow? No, pile. It's just an expression. You know, I was just sitting here thinking... How little we know about each other. You take a girl, for instance. You think you know her. You think you have simpatico. <laughs> then all of a sudden, poof! The whole thing goes up in a cloud of smoke. Oh, that ain't never happened to me. You know Bunny? Miss Bunny? Your girlfriend? Sure, I know her. She's real pretty and she's real nice. I really like her. How is she? Poof. <laughs> Golly, you mean... Poof. Tonight, the whole thing went up in a cloud of smoke. Well, it 
Sergeant, I... I might have married her. Oh, you never know. You never know. Would you excuse us, please, Sergeant? We got to go. Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead, fellas. Have a good time. I'll just sit here and think. We'll see you later. Come on. Another one. You know, life is like a beer. Once you lose your head, you're all finished. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Now, what's the matter? Why are we leaving so suddenly? I mean, terrible golly. I never have seen Sergeant Carter like that. Did you notice how red his eyes was? Oh, Gomer, come on. Now... There's nothing sadder in the whole world than a Marine sergeant that's been crying. Gomer, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. I mean, he'll get over it. Look, why don't we just go back inside? No, what... we got to do something. We just got to. Gomer, now, look, you stay out of it. That's the trouble with people today. They're too proud after a fight to admit that either one of them's wrong. Gomer, now, you know Carter. He would never go to her and apologize. Right, but why can't I go? You! Hey, Miss Bunny. Gomer. If you're looking for Sergeant Carter, he isn't here. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, me and my friend want to talk to you for a minute or two. It's kind of important. Well, yeah. Sure. Come on in. Uh, this is my friend here, Frankie Lombardi. Frankie, this is Miss Bunny. Hi, Miss Bunny. Well, hi, Frankie. Well, uh, won't you sit down? Uh, could I get you something? Oh, no, no, thank you. We're fine. Oh. What's on your mind? Well, uh, we just seen Sergeant Carter. What could that possibly have to do with me? Well, uh... I guess we'll be running along. Now, wait a minute, Frankie. You see, Miss Bunny, he feels just awful about you two going poof. I've never seen him so upset, and he looks terrible, just terrible, don't he, Frankie? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think he was crying. <laughs> just on the level. If you don't believe us, why don't you come see for yourself? You'll see how bad he feels without you, and you'll see how lonesome he is just sitting there all alone. Gee. That's kind of hard to believe. Please say you'll come. Why, the sight of you will make a new man out of you. Well, I don't know, Gomer. Why doesn't he call me? Oh, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. That big, proud teddy bear. Then you'll come? All right. Wait, I'll go get my purse. Thank you, Miss Bunny. I thank you. And the teddy bear's gonna thank you. <laughs> you know... Life is like a paper napkin. <laughs> Vince! Vince Carter! Vince! Toby! Toby Eigler! <laughs> Not anymore. Toby Comstock. This is my husband, Bill. Bill, this is Vince Carter, an old flame of mine. Hi, Hi Vince. Bill. Very nice to meet you. You sure broke a lot of hearts when you took her off the market. Say, can you sit down and have a drink? We'd like to, but we're meeting some friends. Tell them I'll be right over, honey. I just want to sit here and talk to Vince for a few minutes. It's been ages. Okay. Nice to meet you, Belle. Same to you, Vince. Sit down, Toe. Hey. You look just great, Toby. He's right over there. Where do you see him? I hope you recognize him. There. <laughs> Thanks a lot, fellas. I'm sure glad you talked me into this. Now I can go home and read a book. Now will you keep your nose out of other people's business? Look what you've done now. Maybe I should have done it the other way around. Why don't we talk to Sergeant Carter? We? Now, wait a minute, Gomer. Count me out. I sure wish you'd come along, Frankie. It's a kindly, charitable act that I think it'd make you proud. Oh, yeah. Hi, fellas. Where you been? Well, uh, we went out and uh, guess who we seen? Miss Bunny. No kidding, you saw Bunny? Mm-hmm. Where? She was uh, coming out of her apartment, right, Frankie? Y yeah, that's right. That's where it was, her apartment. 
That's where we saw her coming out of. Her apartment. Yep, that was it. I wonder where she was going. Last thing I heard her say was she was going to stay home and read a book. Isn't that what she said, Frankie? Uh, yeah, that was it. I heard her. She said she was going to go home and read a book. Wait a minute. You saw her coming out of her apartment and she said she was going to go home and read a book? Maybe she had to go out and buy one. Y yeah, yeah, li like to the drugstore to buy one of those um, uh, uh, paperbacks. I think I might have heard her say she was going to go home and read a, a paperback. She's too popular to sit home carrying a torch for me. <laughs> Hey, so you're the one that's been knocking. I didn't even know you were home. I'm sorry, Phyllis. It's just that I was trying to read, and I thought maybe you could keep it a little quieter up there. Hey, I'm having a party. Why don't you come up? No, thanks. I've got some fun people up there. I sure hate to see you miss out on it. Maybe next time. Well, okay. If you change your mind, we'll be up there. All right, honey, thank you. I'll try to keep the noise down. Okay. Uh, I think it's ridiculous to go over there. It's a wild goose chase. She won't be there. She will. I know it. I'll bet you a dollar to a donut. She's sitting there reading a book all by herself. Right, Frankie? Yeah, reading a book and probably crying. <laughs> reading and crying. Let's go. Come in. You all come to the party, so we're going to bring the party to you. Come on, get it! <laughs> Well, at least somebody's having a good time tonight. Don't you worry, Sergeant. Everything's gonna be okay once you see that lonesome little face. <laughs> hey, here comes three more. I better get some more soda, too. <laughs> you to keep your nose out of their business, didn't I, Gomer? But you had to go and play the peacemaker. All right, I hope you learned a lesson. I know. Suppose I went to Miss Bunny and told her oh, that I... For Pete's sakes, Gomer, now stay out of it. If you'd let them alone in the first place, that they'd probably be together by now. I know, but if I No just... buts about it. Now, look, you want to help Sergeant Carter? Stay out of his life. I suppose you're right. Quick, put some elbow grease into it. Here comes Sergeant Carter. Hey, Sergeant. Uh, me and Frankie here are doing a real good job on the windows, the corners and all. You know, Pyle, life is like a pane of glass. <laughs> One minute, the sun is shining through. And all of a sudden, there's a storm. Everything gets all blurry. And if the pressure gets to be too much, it cracks. I got to do something. I just can't stand here and do nothing. I got to do something. Now, Gomer, you said you were going to keep out of it. No, I'm going to help him. Only this time, I'm going to get help to help him. Oh, Gomer, what are you talking about? I'm going to go see the chaplain. He'll know what to do. The chaplain? Now, look, Gomer, you can't... You ain't going to talk me out of it. If you don't want to go with me, I'll go by myself. Some people just feel things more deeply than others. You know what I mean, chaplain? A lot of fellers get real excited and show their feelings, whereas others just keep it inside and suffer. And this uh, friend of yours is more like the latter type. Sir? He suffers silently. Oh, yes, sir, and it can break your heart just to see it. I'm terribly worried about him, sir. Honest, I am. Well, you're a good friend, son. And that's what this man needs. Understanding friends who'll cheer him up when he's in this depressed condition. After a while, he'll snap out of it. Well, I sure hope so. He looked awful this morning, just awful. Well, that's why it's important to stay close to him. It's at times like these they're apt to do uh, irresponsible things. Irresponsible things? <laughs> you know, like uh, 
go into town and start... Do away with yourself, you mean? <laughs> well, I really didn't mean quite that. I know. I've read about it in the papers lots of times where a fella has a fight with his girl and then does away with his sale. Well, no, son. You oh, see, I can I just see it happening. I can close my eyes and see him. That sad face walking right straight out into the ocean till it's over his head, just like James Mason done in a star spawn. I assure you nothing like that will happen. Now, you just get back to your friend and uh, do the best you can to take his mind off his worries. Thank you, Chaplain. I'll do my best. It's just one more thing I want to say, Chaplain. I hope you don't mind my not mentioning the name of my friend. Oh, not at all, son. Not at all. You know how it is. He might feel kind of funny my coming here without his knowledge, so that's the reason I didn't mention his name. I understand perfectly. He might get angry if I said who he was, and when Sergeant Carter gets angry, he really gets angry. <laughs> Out. Forget it. I won't breathe it to a soul. Oh, thank you, Chaplain. Thank you. Now, you get back to your friend and uh, see what you can do to lift his spirits. Yes, sir. Okay, Gilbert. You saw the chaplain. Now, can we please get back to our work? Get back to work? You heard what he said. I gotta stick around Sergeant Carter. He needs me now. <laughs> Vince, you look awful. If I were you, I'd take it easy in town tonight. It's just what I'm gonna do. I mean, from the way your eyes look with those circles on them. I know how I look. And you wanna know why? I haven't slept for three nights, that's why. I'm sorry. It's tough enough to sleep with the problems I got, but when I finally do, there's always some interruption and boom, there goes the sleep. So what's the plan? I'm going into town. I'm gonna get a room on the top floor of the normal hotel away from everything and everybody. And then I'm going to sleep and sleep and sleep. Good idea. That business about Bunny really threw you, huh? Well, what had to be had to be. But now I'm going to get a grip on myself, and a good night's sleep will help out. Well, is it quiet at the normal? Sure. No interruptions. And even if it isn't, what's that? Earplugs. Really shuts out the noise. Good deal. You know, Boyle, life is like a lock. <laughs> How's that? I'll see you, Boyle. Take it easy, Sarge. I wonder where he's going. Now, I don't know, but wherever he's going, it doesn't look like he needs you. So, Gomer, please, let's just go back and finish our... I'm going to find out. Oh, Hi, Corporal. What's the matter? You guys got nothing to do? Well, uh, we was looking for Sergeant Carter. Sergeant Carter's gone. He won't be back today. Well, do you know where he went? He went to town, okay? Do you know if he had a day, Corporal? What are you, a cop? No, he didn't have a date. The reason he went to town was to get away, to get away from everybody. Satisfied? Well, do you know where we could find him in town? Look, Pyle. He didn't want to be disturbed. He went to the Hotel Norma, and all he wants to do is sleep. Sleep? That's right. He took a room at the hotel so he could sleep and sleep and sleep. That's what he told me. Now, get out of here and stop asking so many questions. Did you hear that, Frankie? All he wants to do is sleep and sleep and sleep and in the hotel room. Yeah. We got to do something. Got to do something quick. Uh, this is Vince Carter in 517. Until you hear different from me, I don't want to be disturbed at all. I'm going to be sleeping, so uh, no calls, nothing. Thank you. You got to believe me, Miss Bunny. He's gonna do away with himself. Oh, fellas, please, you're insulting my intelligence. I know Vince Carter. He made you do this, right? No, you hadn't seen him these last couple of days. He's a broken man. It's the truth, Miss Bunny. He does nothing but talk to himself. Well, that's a new way to commit suicide. He's gonna bore himself to death. <laughs> no, you don't know what you're saying, Miss Bunny. Why, this very minute he Oh, could yeah? Be... Then why did you come here? Why didn't you go to the police instead, huh? Why? Well, you know Sergeant Carter. He wouldn't listen to the police. Never. You're the only one that can save him. You're the only 
only one he'll listen to. But if you're not coming, maybe we had better go to the police. We better hurry. Come on, Frankie. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. I'm coming with you. <laughs> The room clerk will be back in 15 minutes. We can't wait that long. Can you tell us what room Sergeant Vincent Carter's in? Oh, uh, Vincent Carter. He just checked in, room 517. Oh, but you can't go up there. He doesn't want to be disturbed. He went to sleep. At 6 o'clock in the evening? It's too late. We came too late. No, it can't be. Come on. <laughs> Here it is, 517. Oh, please don't let us be too late. Please, no, please. Oh, And guess why? Well, don't look at me. I came down here to save your life. At least that's what someone told me. Well, uh, I guess I made a mistake. Well, you're not the only one. Bunny, wait. You mean you came over here because you thought that I... that I... Well, the way they made it sound, I... And you came racing over here because you was afraid... Well, of course I came racing over. Naturally, I came racing over. Oh, Bunny. I feel like a sap for the way I acted towards you. I really do. Well, how do you think I feel? Was it really because of me that you couldn't sleep for three nights? Well, yeah, I was pretty upset. I missed you a lot, bud. Same here, Vince. Well, you did it, Gomer. They're together again. Oh, bless their hearts. We'll leave you two alone. Miss Bunny will be right outside. They're entitled to a bit of privacy. Frankie, see him? It's just like watching a movie with a happy ending. <laughs> Vince, it's a uh, Gomer. Huh? Act like you didn't see him duck, duck, duck. He's already seen us. <laughs> huh? Hey, Sergeant. Hey, Miss Bunny. Well, well, well. It's sure good to see you two together, happy and everything. And to think, this is the place where it started just the other night. Do you know the whole story of what happened, Miss Bunny? I mean, everything? Well, yeah, I... Well, it's a story worth telling. Here's how it happened right from the start. You see, Frankie and me were sitting at that table right over yonder, and then a little while, Sergeant Carter come in, looking like he had lost his last friend. He looked just terrible, Sergeant. So anyway, he raised me. 